and welcome to the SciFest Movie Talk episode. So in this episode I'll be discussing the 1988 dark comedy and simply outrageously macabre movie Beetlejuice as directed by Tim Burton. Now before I get started with my review I just want to give a big shout out to Music with Dr. Hooper who actually requested this review quite some time ago. Um, Music with Dr. Hooper, he has become quite a good friend um, on YouTube and they offer um, some very interesting and diverse music selections on their channel from classic to jazz uh, to unique arrangements and you know even national anthems. It is quite good so please do check it out. If you have some time, um, yeah absolutely check out the channel. I will leave a link to the channel in description below and we'll link a Music with Dr. Hooper video to the end of this episode. So, Beetlejuice then. Um, what an absolute corker of a film, you know? Um, <clears throat> we, in the film, we're kind of introduced to Adam and Barbara Maitland, as played by Alec Baldwin, who I had literally no idea was in this film. It literally does not look like Alec Bald Baldwin to me anyway, but that's by the by. And Gina Davis, respectively who are kind of looking forward to their vacation at home, doing their house up, you know, being together. However, after popping out to the shops, something kind of feels a bit different, a bit odd um, when they return home. It turns out, in fact, they didn't quite make it after plunging to their deaths in a terrible freak accident. They are now the recently deceased. Unable to leave their home uh, due to the, the presence of some rather nasty customers outside of the property, uh, they are soon joined by a new family who have purchased the house thereafter, Charles and Delia Dietz, um, as played by Geoffrey Jones and Catherine O'Hara respectively, and their daughter Lydia, as played by Win Win uh, Win Winona Ryder, all tongue twisted who lives in her own dark world um, and indeed can see and ultimately befriends the Maitlands. The Dietzes have plans to remodel the house in their own very distinct tastes. Well, rather Delia does, to be quite fair, with the help of a ever cynical life coach of sorts, uh, Otho, as played by Glenn Shaddix. However, the Maitlands aren't really keen um, and so don't really want to share their space with people who are so different. They then set out to do everything they can to scare the Dietzes out of their home. Only thing is, they're terrible at it. In fact, they are that terrible, they're entertaining and the Dietzes plan to bring them forth using an incantation to perform parlor tricks, to be fair and become the newest tourist sensation. Um, unfortunately, without realising it, this could actually kill them again. So, step in Beetlejuice, as played by Michael Keaton, the ghost with the most, a self-proclaimed freelance bio-exorcist. He promises to get rid of the living, um, but doesn't work well with others, um, doesn't work well with himself, um, has some very questionable hygiene habits and has some very outrageous methods, um, certainly an acquired taste. So the first thing to note about this film um, is its soundtrack. I normally do soundtrack kind of at the last uh, part of the thing, but yeah, it is an excellent film all told um, and all, all round. And I'll get to that, um, but the first thing that really does hit you when this film starts is its catchy theme tune, penned by the maestro of catchy themes, Danny Elfman, um, bringing us one of his very best works, I think, outside The Simpsons. No, one of his best works. It is zany. Um, it's punchy and totally off the wall, basically exactly like the rest of the film, and really does set that tone right from the start. You get the feel you are really about to embark on something quite different, lively, vibrant and utter madness, you know, and that couldn't be closer to the truth. And indeed, it doesn't let up throughout the movie with some excellently dark moments mixed with some more upbeat and, and ludicrous notes. To be honest, the pairing of Tim Burton and Danny Elfman, which 
is their second outing, I believe, um, after the very first effort, which was the 1985 movie Pee-wee's Big Adventure. I've not actually seen that one. Um, their pairing in this film is just simply magical. They really do seem to be so in tune with each other's expectations and aspirations for what the movie, and of course, you know, aspirations for what this movie wanted. And, and of course, this continued a partnership that was to bring us some even more iconic work in the near future. Indeed, this may have been one of their early works together, but I would suggest this is one of the very best. Putting together each other's styles in one cavalcade of imagination, to be quite fair. And then, when you throw in Michael Keaton into the mix, this just pops. I can imagine nobody else now um, so suited to playing Beetlejuice. For the most part, however, the film is actually less about the title of character than it is actually about the Maitlands, um, until really about halfway through. We do get to see their journey, um, really, and their attempts to scare off the Dietzes before Beetlejuice even really makes his appearance. But when he does, um, it is one grand entrance, um, very much akin to a non-stop funhouse of macabre and disgusting fun. Keaton, he literally takes that, that role and injects everything he has into it. And second to that, um, so does everybody else, you know? Um, everybody else that's involved in this film really, really throws everything they've got. There are so many varied and fantastic characters in this movie, and each is superbly played. Everybody puts in their all, and it just simply looks and feels like everybody was just having great fun, getting really into each of their characters, which just really makes everything so much more enjoyable and really rallies the audience. And no one scene exemplifies this more than the dinner scene where Adam and Barbara make the Dietzes and their dinner guests uh, throw down and do a full-on Calypso dance. Um, it is outrageously funny. I mean, TikTok would be proud. But yeah, okay, it is totally off the reservation, but it is just so much fun. The movie is also a visual treat. Um, I did actually forget um, that it actually included so much excellent stop motion animation. Um, overall, it was an eclectic mix of live action, spectacularly gruesome practical special effects, and indeed quite a bit of some of Tim Burton's stop motion animation, um, you know, staple, you know. The special effects do indeed, you know, they hold up pretty well. Um, the stop motion is absolutely spellbinding. Tim Burton certainly had a vision with this film, and that exudes through the storytelling and the cinematography, bringing us some devilishly delightful, a little, devilishly delightful ideas on what the afterlife and the underworld may look like. Um, very surreal, but very relatable at the same time. Indeed, death does seem to open up a whole new world of bizarre possibilities. It feels fresh, even, even to this day, morbidly fun um, and totally distinct. There is, there is very little, to be fair, I have ever watched that even comes close to kind of that, that, that perfect mix of dark comedy, music, live action and stop motion animation that this film throws at its audience. Full of absolute old school charm and some excellent one-liners, which have now become some iconic catchphrases, at least in our household. Such as my favourite phrase uh, to use when putting up the flat pack furniture. This thing reads like stereo instructions. Um, and maybe it's heaven. Um, well, if it's heaven, there wouldn't be dust everywhere. Absolutely classic. And I'm sure it's about the only place where you can see ghosts, that's it, ghosts, putting sheets on their heads to become ghosts. It's mad, absolutely mad, but genius. It is one of those rare films that leaves you on a high with a real satisfied feeling. You might be wondering what on earth did you just watch, but satisfied nonetheless. It's, it is one fantastic ride through the afterlife. So, 
that brings me to the end of this episode. I do hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, please leave a like. Please do hit that subscribe button for more movie reviews, trailer reactions, and other movie-related content. Definitely loved having you here at SciFest Movie Talk. We would definitely love to have you back. Um, but yes, thank you very much for watching. Goodbye.